talking about a project that's called Palafish. Uh, I'm going to try to do it in, I uh, hope. I'm going to try to do it, uh, justify why do we need uh, Palafish, why is it a thing at all, uh, and then talk a little bit about how we solve the problem that so the concept that we were working with, and then how we actually implement the problem, uh, like the actual structure, uh, infrastructure, the language that we're using, the technologies, and stuff like that. And there's going to be demos in between. And Maybe the Wi-Fi works, so maybe it actually works. It works. So, if you want to follow up uh, during the slides, the slides are online already, so you can just use the link or this amazing QR code that nobody uses anymore QR codes, but still, <laughs> if you want to use one, you have one. So, what is bubble switch? And this is the part that there's no way it's going to work, but wait. <laughs> okay, so this bubble fish is a bird that uh, Gets, like it fits from a neural base and then puts things. <laughs> then it allows you to understand that you can always enjoy it a little bit too much. So you can go and wash your hands. Uh, <laughs> this is from a movie, uh, the uh, Hatch, Hitchhiker Guide to the Universe, uh, which is a great movie that I have not watched, but after watching this, now I want to watch it. But uh, basically, the bubble fish is the whole concept is a universal translator. And what we're trying to do is pretty much the same thing, a universal translator, not really a translator, but a universal way of understanding problem in any language. So, uh, at source we do machine learning on source code. And machine learning on source code has uh, the same challenges as any kind of machine learning, which is mainly what is the data and how do you get it, how do you gather it, right? So uh, we have a whole team on that. Uh, there's a whole team at source that Basically, it has a bunch of projects, and all of them are open source, but I want to speak on okay? <coughs> And those uh, projects are the ones that are going to go and fetch source code from Git repositories and put them all together in a format that allows us to have something more compressed and useful to basically learn later from. And uh, so there's the problem of creating those data sets and then analyzing them. We have another project we call it the engine that is specifically for that. Now, the problem is that if you have source code, you can understand it in many different one of them is, is a sequence of bytes. That's what it is. That's what source code is. But if you understand that, you're actually limiting yourself to what you can actually learn. Uh, if, has anyone done any course on like neural networks or stuff like that? Okay. There's a, there's a very good example, which is uh, this example on um, how to recognize uh, handwritten digits, right? Uh, if you're learning, you're trying to recognize handwritten digits, and rather than using something that allows you to have the structure of, well, this is an image that's square, and these are the pixels, and you know it's up, right, left, or right, or up, right, down, left. Yeah, that's four. So uh, if you don't have that, and everything you have is just a sequence of bytes, being uh, protecting correctly is actually way hard. Right? So structure is important. What is the structure in source code? Structure in source code is the structure of the language, right? If you're writing a photo book, well, you have a photo you have instructions, you have function definitions, all of those things. And those things are defined <coughs> by the language grammar. In a language grammar, as the name says, belongs to a language. And every single grammar language has a slightly different grammar. So what we're trying to do is actually using that language grammar, well, the result of extracting the structure from a program by applying the language grammar as the input for a uh, machine learning problem. And that is the part where it gets interesting, because we don't want to have one single machine learning program. So many talks in it. Uh, let me... Now... I think my laptop just died. <laughs> <laughs> it's not turning on. What? No, no, it's just... Machine learning, you're able to do cool things like 
It is very, uh, very interesting uh, blog post written by Vadim, uh, one of the engineers at source, where he's using, uh, he's learning from all of, the, all of the identifiers on all of the source code we have and creating an embedding. An embedding, basically what it does is it gets from a huge, uh, from a space with a huge number of dimensions, it takes it down to less dimensions so we can learn and understand things. So, it allows you to do cool things, like uh, saying that the, the, the distance from boy to king is the same one as from girl to queen, right? Like, that's kind of interesting. And it allows us also from source code to understand that queries to database as strings to settings or send is to receive as pushes to pop. And this starts to be quite interesting because we're actually extracting information. So you can imagine that, for instance, saying, whenever you're doing to send, you, need, you should be doing pop, right? You could be doing this same analogy over many different concepts that are some, somehow not analog. Um, yeah, uh, this, if you want to read this article, it's really interesting. The, uh, it's right there, lots of the deck. And I definitely recommend it. It's quite long, but it has puppies, so it's good. OK, but in order to do this, to extract an embedding, to generate an embedding out of identifiers, we need to extract identifiers, right? And this is where things start to get hard, because what is an identifier? And how do you extract it? Are you, get, you cannot just do grant, right? And we're so good and just hope for the best. Because maybe an identifier function could be an identifier in Go, but not in JavaScript. Func could be an identifier in JavaScript, but not in Go, because keywords are different. So there's a lot of different concepts, right? So we created Babelfish. And Babelfish, what it is, is a self-hosted server for universal source code parsing and tuning, turning code files into universal abstract in syntax tricks. And now what I'm going to do is explain what that means. So universal. Oh, <laughs> so, what is a universal abstract syntax tree? Before we actually Function, 
we have documentation, so a function is a sequence that structures package as a unit. We're not saying what it looks like, we're not talking about keywords, we're not talking about structure, we're talking about the concept. And this concept applies to many from the languages, right? If you're writing Haskell or if you're writing JavaScript, you know what a function is. There's other things like numbers, and numbers, numeric value, we don't talk about float64 or int or whatever, no, they're just numbers. And you know what a number is, so technically you can apply it to whatever it is. Maybe you even know that a variable is a number, and you can apply this to that variable. And then also we have an identifier. An identifier is this any form of identifier. Like something that identifies things. That's it. So you can use it for many different concepts. So now that we have this, we're able to open the dashboard. And it works. Amazing. So um, we're able to, it's not amazing that it works. It's amazing that the Wi-Fi works. <laughs> Just in case. Thank you. So uh, now you're, Oh no, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Uh, let me, just because it's here. Uh, let me finish this. No. Also, just the Python, right? But we know that num is only for Python. 
you can say and all the numerals will be told in a language, and here what you're passing is actually taking the row. So you're saying row number and row literal. Also you can do the, all the arguments and function calls. So now what you're able to do is with a single uh, line, you're actually able to extract information from, uh, we have petabytes of data from source code, you're able to extract that word. And I would demo it, but it doesn't work. But basically here, you can do the EUSD query, you can actually query something and you can get only the nodes have match that query. Uh, I'm almost out of time, so the uh, architecture is going to be this is architecture. So, um, so we have a client, we have a server, and then the server has drivers. We have a uh, driver per programming language. The interesting thing is, I work like I used to work in the Google team at Google, so I write Go. So there's Go first. Uh, the server and the normalizer are reading Go, and the parser is reading the language that you're passing. And this part is really important because we don't want to write parsers, right? Uh, every programming language has a compiler, and very often that compiler is written in the same language. Which means that very often you have a Python, a Python parser with Python, a Java parser with Java. We want to use those. So what we have is we have a process reading the native language that is going to print somehow a UASD that is not uh, annotated, and then we have an SDK for the normalizer to annotate every single thing for uh, the language. So that's how it works. We use Docker because uh, that allows us what the server can download drivers uh, in a very easy way. Every driver is seen as a different logger image. And then we use gRPC. So uh, you can contribute. Everything is open source. We have both of them. It's on github.com uh, slash battlefish with all the letters. Uh, and there's a bunch of references, Bumblefish, B-E-L dot, no, B-E-L-F dot S-H is where you're gonna find all the documentation for the website. Uh, we have source of tech, it's, we are, it's us, so you're gonna have all the other projects that surround, and all of them are also open source, so if you're interested in what to do. And, and then we're also on GitHub, and I'm on Twitter, and my company is too. And again, if you wanna take a picture of that, then just copy me into the slides and see that video. And we're on time. Thank you.